Hey guys, have you ever wondered how do I prune my raspberries? Do I know, how do I know when I need to do it? And what do I look for when I'm trying to prune my raspberries? Well, today we're gonna show you all about that and more. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. You can actually see that it's a beautiful spring day outside today. This weekend is supposed to be really warm. And then we're gonna get that back down into the 20s and lower 30s this week. So still not quite spring, but we're getting a taste of it. Today I wanna show you a little bit about how to prune your raspberry bushes and what to look for when you're doing it. So spring is the best time to prune your raspberries. And I'm gonna show you why, because if you look behind me, you're gonna see some raspberry bushes and we didn't do a great job of fertilizing them last year, so they're not coming back quite as well as they did previously. But I'm gonna show you what to look for, how to see which canes you need to prune. And also, we've got a whole series on how to uh, grow raspberries, blackberries, and black raspberries, those types of things. Check it out, I'm gonna put the link in the description right up here, but uh, check that out. You may wanna watch those even before this, but we're gonna show you how to prune today, and we're gonna show you which canes to look for. We're gonna show you first year, second year type of canes. So let's get started. Now pruning your raspberries is actually a fairly simple process. The first thing you wanna do is you're gonna look in, I think spring is the absolute best time to do this. And the reason is because during the spring, you can identify which canes are which, and then kind of take action based off of that. So if you haven't watched our prior video on this, go ahead and check it out because I think in a lot of ways that will share more than what we're gonna go into today because today is all about pruning. But I will show you very briefly. This is a first year cane from that, that we have coming up, kind of shooting up. Uh, this one is a small one. So this is a second year cane. You can tell this one because it's got this brown color of the wood. It's a very distinct, I call it a more uh, recent growth type of look to it. And you can see that one going to the ground. It's a little smaller, uh, but it has vigorous growth. And typically these are the longer ones. They'll get kind of skinny at the ends. This is a, this is a first or second year. It's, it's last year's first growth, this year's second uh, year cane. So this one was established yes, last year. This is an example of a third year cane. Now this is the type of cane that we're going to prune this year. You can see that the wood is, it definitely looks different. It has an older look to it. Uh, it has more of what I would call this, uh, you know, flaking wood that's coming off. The other thing is you can tell very quickly. That, that wood is dead. So that's wood that if it comes back, it's not going to be very productive. Probably the easiest way to tell these canes apart is this is a third year cane. And so it's got this peeling bark. Uh, it is, at least in this case, this is a red raspberry. That's an indica good indicator that it's time to go ahead and prune this cane off. So we're gonna take that one out this year. Same's true, you can see that one back there in the back. Uh, here, this one's going to get pruned as well, uh, just because these are not gonna produce this year. They probably won't even come back, but if they do, they won't produce. So we're gonna get rid of those this year. Uh, this is an example, however, of another one. And you can see on this one, so that's the other thing, is you can see these nodes that are coming back. And that's another great way to tell if this is gonna be a viable cane this year, is they've got these small growths of leaves that are coming back. This is a second year cane, this will produce this year. It's not a third year cane, but you can see off the same plant over here, that is a third year cane. It is one we will prune back, it is dead. It doesn't have any of those nodes coming back. So that's a great example. This one, if you can tell, uh, if you take a guess, this one is a second year cane. So we're gonna leave that one. You don't have these uh, buds that'll be coming back to life here very shortly. Actually, you can see one that's starting down there. So that is an example of a first year cane. So you should see these shooting straight up out of the ground. One of the ways that these raspberry plants will propagate is they will send roots down through, um, you know, kind of underground and they will pop up in different places. Sometimes, a lot of times they're right by the plant. Other times they're actually further away. You can see that, you know, right down here, all these have new plants that are propagating nearby. But here's an example of where the cane has shot, this particular plant has shot a root that's gone underground and then it's popping up here on the outside of our wall. Here's one that did it last year. But these canes will be one of the key ways that they propagate. 
There's also another way where the plant will actually lean over and will drop a new root ball and start a new plant from the actual, from the end or from the tip down here. And I'll show you one of those right now. So you can see this is another one of our canes and this is one of the, this is the other way that they propagate as well. So you can see this raspberry cane is coming up. Now, last fall, you can see that it comes around here. And that is a root ball at the end. And what they do is they will lean over and then the other end will turn into a root cell and they will actually start propagating and drop another cane. That way if the cane gets broken, now you have two canes. So this is another way that you can propagate your raspberries and they will propagate themselves Okay guys, as we start to prune these, I'm gonna show you the shears that I like to use around here for all of our small plants like this. Any bushes, uh, any fruit bushes or fruit trees that are small in diameter, I'm gonna use these same type of shears. Uh, they're just pruning shears. They're made by Fiskars. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for these. I really, really like these, but these are good uh, for just small hand uh, using. Again, if you're gonna use stuff like this, uh, I highly recommend it because these are easy to open and close. They have a slide lock that you can, you know, they spring loaded so they open back up. Anything bigger than about a quarter of an, or eh, anything bigger than about a half inch, I wouldn't recommend these at all. I get something that is a two-handed shear that you can use and get a lot more leverage on. So let's get started pruning these and I'll show you how to do it. All right, okay, so we start this. Let's isolate our cane again. This is the one we're gonna be trimming. Again, this is gonna be pruned off because you can see that this is the one that has the peeling bark. It's no longer viable. So some of these have thorns, you can see them right here. Just be careful as you're doing this. If you wanna wear gloves, that's a, obviously a thing that you can do. Some of them are very small and feel, they're almost like hairs. Some of them, like this one, is a little more prickly, so you just wanna be more careful. So we're gonna take this cane right here. We're gonna follow all the way down to the ground. We're gonna cut it right there. Now I like to cut mine at an angle. So I like to put in the metal piece first and then cut from the outside. You can see that this is completely dead. There's actually no, absolutely no life in there. There's no greenery at all. So we, we chose a good one. We're also gonna hit this one in the back back here. We talked about earlier. We're gonna hit this one on the side here. Actually gonna get this one that we missed last year. And the final one we're gonna get is this one right here. So now you can see what we're left with. We actually have three vibrant canes that we'll produce this year. The other thing is we've gotten rid of all of that underbrush, all of the stuff that's not gonna produce won't, won't be alive this year. It cleans it up and it keeps us so that we can get to the fruit easier this year as we're picking. Okay, you can see now we have gotten them all cleaned up. We're back to only the viable canes. And this is what was trash. So what we use is we'll trellis these up back here on some of these, some of this wire, this fence line. Now we used to use some of these old ties, but we found that they rubbed the plant quite a bit. So that could cause problems. So what we switch to is actually these guys. This is two different clips that I've clipped together. These can be used a variety of ways. They can either be used singularly, and you can clip them like that, and they clip in just like that. Or you can double them up, like this here. And that's actually how we choose to use them when we're trellising. So what we'll do is we'll come in here in the back. What we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll clamp one side to the fence, and then we'll come down We'll clamp the other. This is really hard to do with one hand. All right, so you can see there, I had to pause it for a second. But you can see that this is how we clamp it now. This will stay in here, but it's got enough room that it can move within here. Uh, it keeps it close. I've got it clamped up to another vine or another raspberry bush right here. So this is actually, the, I'll, I'll link this in the description. These are actually really, really cool. I like these a lot. We use these on our tomatoes. Uh, we use them on our bushes. Uh, they are they're kind of a godsend when it comes to the stuff. Again, you can use these if you want to use these. These find these on garden hoses and we save them sometimes, but the wire in them just they're rough and they tend to rub really bad. So that's why we went down this path. Now guys, one of the secrets that we always tell people about when we're talking about blueberries, it needs to be acidic soil. 
one of the things that you can do and you can see that these are thriving they've got blossoms all over them and they're absolutely thriving and one of the secrets is that we have access to a decent amount of coffee from a local uh, a local company that serves coffee to their employees and it's all freshly ground so we can pick up coffee grounds for free at this place the caffeine inhibits the growth of a lot of other things and so because of that it does cut down on how much other grass and weeds and stuff pop through in here but this stuff is great for the soil it's got a lot of nitrogen and it also allows you to get that acidic value into the soil that you need that you wouldn't have necessarily otherwise so and you can see proof is in the pudding In contrast to our blueberries that we used coffee grounds, spent coffee grounds to help fertilize, over here, this is what it looks like with our rabbit manure. Now this has been sitting all winter, it's actually got some black soldier fly larvae in it, which I may have the chickens come over here and pick away. Uh, but that's what this stuff is, it's absolutely amazing. These things will go crazy now that we've got this set up in here. What we'll do after this is we will cover it up with some mulch and that will be the end. So I hope this video has helped you guys understand how to prune your raspberries. We're done now. We've got all of our manure laid and we are ready to go. These guys should really grow. They've got lots of potassium, lots of nitrogen, lots of phosphorus in that rabbit manure. If you don't have a local place that you can find rabbit manure, it is far better than cow manure, horse manure, any of those other types. It's got far higher NPK values. I suggest you guys go to Tractor Supply or maybe some other farm store that you have in town. Look up on the bulletin boards. They often have people that will sell rabbit manure from their own places. We actually are thinking about getting into it as well. Put a comment below if that's something you're pursuing as you're trying to figure out how to go about navigating this nitrogen shortage and the fertilizer shortage that we have. If you have some interest in rabbit manure, I'd love to hear like what your experience has been with it, if you've used it, if not, what your interest is in it. So leave us a comment below. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have, please click that like button. Also subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you follow us as we continue on our backyard journey. Our goal here is to help you learn how to raise your own food in your own backyard. All right, till next time, guys, have a great one.